Hello and welcome to the Mask Tool Basics tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to run through some of the fundamentals of the Mask Tool and hopefully give you a few simple tips on how to work with it. So to begin, I'm going to add an animated overlay from our current starter pack. And before I actually go ahead and build this scene, I'm just going to use some of these layers to illustrate a few key concepts for you. So I'm just going to scale this layer up nice and big so that we can see what's going on and then navigate to the tool menu and to the mask tool here and select it. The mask tool can be used to erase or paint in regions of any layer. And the way it works is that it's layer specific. So you would select the layer you want to mask or the layers that you wanted to mask in the layer editor here. So in this case, I'll select the wing layer and then you would choose between the eraser here or the paintbrush, depending on whether you want to paint out or paint in that layer. So I'll choose the eraser, and then it's simply a case of stroking on the canvas, and you'll see that I'm erasing the wing. And in the region that I've erased, you get this preview color, and that can be useful if you've got a, a layer with transparency, like this wing layer, where you won't always have pixel data where you're painting, but you'd still like to know where you're masking. And this mask region is only visible to you during preview and doesn't affect the final result at all. And you can actually customize the look of this to your taste, as I'll explain a little bit later. So I've erased some of the layer there, but it's very easy just to switch back to the paintbrush and again, gesture on the layer to paint it back in. And that's pretty much the normal workflow that you would undertake. Uh, you'd start off by erasing or painting in parts of the layer and then switch back and forth to refine the mask. You can invert the mask that you're painting at any time. Um, simply by pressing the invert button here. And this again can be a very useful thing um, as part of your workflow. It's very quick and easy to keep inverting the mask back and forth, and it can be very helpful when you're refining the edges of your mask. To discard a mask, um, it's simply a case of tapping the reset button here. Make sure that you have the layer selected that you want to reset the mask for. Tap the reset button and confirm. And you see we go back to an unmasked layer. Now, when you begin a mask, it's created in one of two states, and it depends on whether you're beginning a mask with the paintbrush or with the eraser. If you begin a mask with the eraser, then it's assumed that you want the layer visible, but you want to be painting out parts of it. So as I begin stroking, you'll see the layer remains visible, and I'm just erasing the layer as you've seen before. And I can switch to the paintbrush and paint it back in as you'd expect. But if I discard that mask, and this time I begin a mask with the paintbrush selected, then it's assumed that you actually want to paint in where the layer appears, and that it should be invisible by default. And when I begin the stroke, you'll see that the wing disappears, because the mask has been created to make it invisible. And as I paint, I progressively reveal the layer. And there's no sort of right or wrong way to do this, it's just two different ways of working. Obviously I can switch the eraser and refine that mask, and I can invert the mask at any time. So this is just something to bear in mind um, when you're figuring out how you want to work with the tool. Masks can be painted onto a layer regardless of the position of the layer. If I exit the mask tool and move this layer around, go back, you'll see that I'm still able to erase and paint back in that layer. I can even put that layer in um, a 3D rotation using the transform tool. Give it some extreme perspective warp even. And when I go back to the mask tool, I'm still able to paint a mask onto that layer and to refine it just as you'd expect. A key concept of masking is that masks are a part of their parent layer. And that means that if you were to move the layer after masking it, you would see that the mask travels with it. And this can obviously be a very useful feature, um, especially if you want to isolate regions of a layer and then apply additional animations to them. Overall, it's definitely something to think about when organizing your layers. And this is something that we'll go into further in other tutorials. Another thing to notice is that if you were to duplicate a layer with a mask, then the mask will go with it. So you can duplicate layers by long pressing the plus layer button here with the layer you want to duplicate selected. You get an additional menu, which also lets you add other photos and replace layers and so forth. But I'm just going to select duplicate. 
and you'll see that the layer has been duplicated and then the mask is identical. If I select both layers, go to the mask tool, discard, you'll notice that with both layers selected, I can paint into their masks simultaneously. Whereas if I just have a single layer selected, my stroke is ignored by the other layer. Likewise, if I switch, I can paint out one wing, but not touch the other. Just something to bear in mind as you're working with it. It can be very useful to paint multiple masks simultaneously, especially if you have overlapping layers. So now we're going to continue on, and I'm actually going to build this scene in order to show you the rest of the fundamentals of the mask tool. I'll start by moving and scaling this first wing into position. Then I'm going to add an empty layer and a second wing. In the transform tool, I'm going to flip it horizontally and then scale it roughly into position. And then I'm just going to do some fine adjustments just to make sure I'm really happy with the final position of the wings before I start masking. In the mask tool, um, I'm going to make sure I've got both wing layers selected, and then I'm just going to start erasing both of them simultaneously. There's a canvas zoom button situated on the top toolbar, which lets you toggle the ability to zoom and pan around on the canvas. This functionality is automatically enabled when you're in the mask tool. So you'll find that you can actually pinch on the canvas and that's how you zoom and pan around the canvas. So the way you typically work is that you would start at a larger scale and kind of block in where the mask should roughly appear. But then you're going to want to zoom in and paint finer detail. Be careful to be deliberate when you're pinching on the screen. If you put both fingers down before you move, you'll be much less likely to paint into the mask. And you'll find that you can zoom in very close and paint down to the single pixel if you really want. One thing that can be useful is to actually make the layers that you're masking slightly transparent um, by going to the blending tool and just reducing their opacity slightly. That'll let you continue to paint their mask, but also see where edges collide, which can be helpful. Another thing to notice is that uh, touch pressure slightly affects the brush size on 3D touch enabled devices. So let me paint with a very light touch now. And then I'll paint again using more pressure. So you can see that the harder I press, the larger the brush size. However, this is a relatively minor effect and it is limited to people with 3D touch devices. Generally speaking, the idea is to use the canvas zoom to change the size of the canvas relative to your fingertips. And in that way, you're changing the brush size relative to the image. And the brush will always be about the size of your fingertip. Now, as you're working, you're going to be changing the level of zoom constantly. You're going to be zooming in to paint finer detail, and then you're going to want to kind of zoom out and review your work. And there's a useful shortcut when canvas zoom is active. So it'll be active all the while that you're in the mask tool, which is just to double tap the canvas. And doing this will toggle the zoom from wherever you're working to fully zoomed out. And then you can double tap again, and it, you'll go straight back to where you're working at your previous zoom level. And it's useful for uh, for example, painting edges, then zooming back out and checking how things look from a distance, and then popping back in. So it's a useful thing to have in your workflow. Here I'm zooming in almost down to the single pixel level, and I'm able to just quickly pop back out, see how that looks, jump back in, keep on refining. Another thing that's very useful when you're working on edges like this is to constantly be inverting the mask back and forth. I can see a little bit of blue sky peeking through there, so I know I need to kind of bring the wings in closer to the arm. But it's possible that I overshoot, and it's kind of hard to see sometimes, but if you're just flipping the mask, you'll easily see the shirt, and I can actually sort of paint the wing back in over the shirt, and then flip back again. Now there are a number of sub-tools within the mask tool that let you gain greater control over your masking. The first and most obvious is the one that's highlighted by default, which is the brush sub-tool. And that lets you choose from a range of brushes with different hardness and opacity properties. If I choose one of these uh, very opaque hard brushes and start painting, you get something like that. 
Um, but if I were to select maybe the softest, least opaque brush and paint with that, you can get a much softer look. And it's completely up to you which one you want to use. All of the brushes have their uses. It just depends on how you want to work and what you're trying to achieve. When it comes to actually feathering the edges of masks, um, something that's very useful is the blur subtool. So rather than having you paint uh, a feathered edge, it can be much quicker for you to just go in and paint a hard edge like this, um, and then to use the blur subtool to apply a, an overall blur to the entire mask. So here I am with a reasonably hard edge, but if I go in to the blur subtool, I'm actually able to feather out that edge. So a very small amount on the slider will get you like a couple of pixels blur, but you're also able to really do something very extreme. So if I zoom right out, you know, you can really have a soft blend between layers um, using this, this feature. Again, it depends what you're trying to do. If you're putting the wings behind the goal like this, you're gonna want maybe only a couple of pixels just to make it a little bit more real and give it less of a kind of cut out look. Um, but if you want to literally cross fade between two images, then maybe you, you wanna crank this up to the maximum. Other functionality that you have um, in the mask tool is the ability to change the opacity of the masks. So by default, masks are fully opaque, which means that if you are erasing something, it completely disappears. If you were to drop the opacity of the mask, you're effectively bringing back the content that you've erased very slowly. So a 50% opacity, half of it shows through. Um, at zero opacity, it's as if you haven't done any masking. And at 100%, anything you've erased is fully erased. Now the last part of the mask tool is the preview subtool. Now you may have noticed as we've been painting masks, we're actually shown a preview of the mask itself uh, using a colored region. So you're typically shown a transparent color where you've erased from a layer. Here you can see we've got a transparent red color. Now the preview subtool lets you change the appearance of this region. Using the slider, you can change the opacity, you can change the color, you can also hide this region entirely. And it's actually useful to hide the preview sometimes because it lets you see the raw results of your masking without any other overlays. So in cases where you, like this, where you can clearly see the feathers and the arm, you don't really need the preview region to tell you what you're doing. But in other cases, let's say when you're painting a layer which itself is transparent or an animated layer where maybe there's no content in that particular place at that particular frame, you're gonna want the preview region to just give you a guide and, and let you know exactly where you've been painting. You may also find that you want to change the color of your mask preview region, just based on the color of your images, the color of your layers. Sometimes it's just easier to see a particular color on top of another color. All mask properties can be set up differently for individual layers, and that includes their preview appearance. So you could have two different layers with two different masks, where each of those masks have different properties. So just to illustrate this, we're giving our two masks a different preview appearance. One's going to be more opaque yellow and the other more transparent green. And sometimes this is just down to personal taste. Sometimes you have two different layers which are overlapping with each other and you want to paint them simultaneously. It can just help you see what you're doing a little better. But at the end of the day, it's completely up to you. There are some additional shortcuts which you can access via the cog icon. There are a variety of options in this menu. And perhaps the most useful one here is the ability to set the default mask preview properties. So you would customize a mask, get it looking exactly how you wanted, and then just tap set current as default. And then any future mask that was created would naturally appear with those properties. So now we're gonna fast forward through the rest of this mask painting. And I'm just gonna recap a few of the main tips. The first thing I'd say is that as you're painting a mask, it's very useful to keep inverting the mask keep switching back and forwards between erasing and painting. Use this as a way to quickly refine your edges and refine your mask. Always remember you can be zooming, changing the zoom. Um, it lets you get in really close and even paint hair strands like this if that's something that you need to do. Remember that you can customize the preview region of the mask. It's just something that's gonna either be down to your personal taste or something to help your actual workflow depending on the content that you're working with. You can double tap to quickly toggle between zooming in and zooming out. And that basically helps you to work in these very close up regions and then pop back out to review your work from a distance and then jump right back into what you were doing. And then of course, remember that you don't always have to feather using the brushes. You can actually just paint a hard edge and then after the fact, 
use the edge blur to just soften your edges a little bit, give yourself a little bit more realism. It really just depends on the subject matter and you know there's no right or wrong way, only what works best for you. So now we've finished painting our masks and in this basic tutorial we just wanted to outline the fundamentals of the tool but there's perhaps some more that we could say in terms of the way you want to think about your layers, the way you want to kind of arrange your masks to make things as efficient as possible for you. As I mentioned in this tutorial earlier on, your masks will actually stick to your layers and move with them. So the way that we've actually gone about doing this wasn't the most flexible way we could have done it. You can see here that if we wanted to make an adjustment to the wings, if we wanted to change their scale or change their position slightly after we'd actually done the masking, then we've actually got a problem because we'd need to adjust our mask for the new position of the wing. In this scenario, it would have actually been better to clone the girl image and place the girl image above the wings and then to actually mask the girl image so that we're painting in the girl above the wings. So in that case, we wouldn't have had a mask on the wing layers at all. The mask would have been on the girl layer above them. And if we'd have done that, then we would have been able to make any adjustments to the wings or even apply additional animations to them and we would not have had to adjust the mask after the fact at all. So I recommend that you check out the advanced mask tool tutorial where we'll go into some slightly more complex ideas, talk a little bit about workflow, and then show you some other clever things that you can actually do with the mask tool. I hope this tutorial helped you and thank you for watching.